corner three is open for three. Count it. Watts pulls up from 18 and connects. Makes the three, driving the lane. Beat it to Porter for an open layup. Watts now saves it in bounds. It'll be to Copeland. To Upshaw. Layup good! Skip pass low to Ritter. Off the glass. She'll score. Lob up to Upshaw. He'll slam it home. Three, two, a shot. And it is good! What about you, Against Charlotte, you guys were able to come away with a victory. You guys came from behind, down 37 to 42 at half. But the key shot was hit by Caroline Warden. It was to make it 65-63 to take the lead. It's her first three-pointer she hit since Tennessee Tech back on December 20th. Is that just a, a moment where she's a veteran player making a big shot? doesn't matter where she's 9 for 10 for the game or 0 for 20. That's just a veteran stepping up making a big shot. Well, th that's the big thing about, big positive about Caroline. She's got so much experience. You know, she's still coming back from that knee. And, uh, you know, we feel comfortable because she started off and on for the last three years. And, uh, you know, if we can get her back anywhere close to being 100 percent, that's not going to do anything but help our, help our basketball team. And, you know, bringing her in, we knew bringing her in in that situation that she would know when to make a play, and she, that was a play that we needed. It was. It was the biggest shot of the game. You guys forced 19 turnovers for 25 points. Charlotte, they only forced 10 turnovers for just seven points. Do you think that was the difference in a game where it was really close and it was going back to back the whole game? Well, I, I thought the, the second half we really we buttoned down on defense. We got in the lanes better. Uh, we were able to get a few more deflections. <clears throat> and that probably was the difference in the ball game was the second half. The first half, I think they shot 57%. And uh, we we had a hand on the ball. I thought we were in a pretty good defensive position, but they were making shots. And that's what teams do. And, you know, uh, we went in at halftime and really, and we just discussed the fact that we had to do a little better job of the rotations. We had to shadow the ball a little bit better. And uh, we, we had to go the boards. And, you know, it, it, Winning basketball games like the Charlotte game and like the Old Dominion game is you've got to win the boards. You've got to go to the boards. And, you know, we didn't do a good job against Charlotte. I think they ended up beating us a few on the boards. But then the Old Dominion game, they just dominated us. So, you know, that's one of the things we've got to start working on. But if you don't, if you don't go to the boards, you don't knock down free throws, Allen, you're not going to win big games like that. And we were very fortunate to win the Charlotte game. And, you know, we were in position to win the Old Dominion game. Last thing again, Charlotte, you mentioned rebounding. That really starts down with your post. Al Johnson continued again off of having freshman of the week, 15 points. But if you look on your bench, Rebecca Reuter, she came in off the bench and scored nine points. Is that starting to become her role? And she's starting to learn that she, to come off the bench and provide great minutes, not only grabbing rebounds, but also scoring as well? Not really. Our two, op our two best offensive uh, post players is Rebecca and and Alex, and uh, when and you know, uh, uh, Gabby is probably one of our best defensive post players and best rebounder. And then Tiana, she does a little bit of both. She's you know, offensively she does a pretty good job and she rebounds pretty good. But you know, we try what we want to do is we want we don't want to lose any of our effectiveness by bringing out Johnson. Our vice versa, bringing out Ruder, and that's kind of the way we've been rotating it around now. If you if you really look at Ruder and Johnson, we probably would be better having both of those posts in if we were dealing with offense. But in our situation with that four post rotation, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Any any two of the four that's playing together, I'm happy with. But you know, offensively, we might be a little bit better with Ruder and Johnson in the game, and you might see more of that as we wind down to have both of them in the game at the end of the game. We moved to Old Dominion. You guys were down just six at half. How crucial was Ty and Bria's first half uh, shots where they hit 17 of the 21 points for you? Well, I think we took away our own uh, momentum. I think we tried to freelance a little bit, tried to innovate a little bit when we were executing to the T. And a lot of times teams take away their own momentum and I thought that's what happened. And we came back out the second half and we began to execute our offense. We attacked the basket instead of driving the basketball laterally, our sideline to sideline, we started driving the basketball to the, to the paint. And I thought that, you know, immediately Ty made a big play coming right back out at halftime. 
And that's what we should have done the first half, and we just couldn't get it across. We went in, we talked about it, showed them what we really thought, how we thought we should attack, and you know, they did a good job taking it back out to the floor. That's, that's the one thing I'm very happy with this team right now, is they are, they're trying their best to be coachable, and that's what we ask them. You mentioned that going into halftime, making that halftime adjust, adjustment. In that third period, you outscored them 23 to 12. What changed specifically for Alex Johnson? Zero points in that first half, and it comes out and scores 10 of her 16 in that third period. I, I thought she, she was attacking the basket too low. She was getting in behind the backboard. She might have been on the wrong block. Uh, there were several different things that we talked about. But uh, more than anything, once you hit a basket, it gets you a little momentum. You hit another basket, you know, so I think that's what got her started. She knocked down a shot or two, and then all of a sudden she's in it. Then she hit, hit a big three. So then you get excited and fired up and hey, you, you know, and uh, I thought she did a good job. Now it was, the game was much like Charlotte as far as the feeling of back and forth, back and forth towards the end. And then that, that game winning shot by Timmons, up to that point, she was only one for eight. You watch the replay. She is heavily guarded by Ty. Ty puts a hand right in her face and she just heaves up a 40 footer and it goes in. Is that just one of those? You were in the right defensive position. You had a hand in her face, and it's just one of those you have to live with that. She made a play. I mean, kid made a play. Uh, she threw them. You know, we turned the ball twice. I think they ended up having to pass it twice. We turned it twice. And then she launches a 40-footer up. It goes in. Uh, that's not the first time in 40 years that I've had something like that happen. And uh, I hope it's the last time. You know, I'd like to have one or two of them myself. But uh, uh, that's just one of those things. Kids played hard. Uh, I was very happy with our effort. We came back, we took the lead, we made some shots. We could have done a little better job. I thought we had some, we gave in to fatigue a little bit there late. We allowed them to enter the ball to the block a time or two uncontested and we can't do that. And that, that comes with inexperience and it also comes with fatigue. So, uh, you know, we got to do a better job at that. If we do, you know, we're gonna be a little better basketball team. You, you mentioned it in your post-game press conference, rebounding, and you, you mentioned right there fatigue towards the end of the game. Did fatigue play a factor in, in, in the in the rebound category, or is that just Old Dominion? They really wanted No, I, I think it did. I, we played Alex uh, Johnson the whole second half, and she probably needed a break. But then, you know, she's scoring. Every time we got her the ball, she's scoring or she was getting fouled. So basically, you know, you're a little bit hesitant to bring someone out that's got a little momentum going, and maybe we left her in a little long. Maybe we should have gave her a break or two. I thought uh, once we went to Becca in there, she made a big time move. Maybe we should have went back to that. You know, hindsight's 2020. Uh, you look back, and there's some things you could have done and should have done. And you know, as a coaching staff, we evaluate that also. So, you know, uh, players are not perfect. Coaches are not perfect. We're all going to make some mistakes. What we got to do is we got to get all that down pat so when we get into the tournament, we know a little bit, of, a little bit better about our substitution, what we're going to do as far as our substitution and, and who plays better together, things like that. And we still got the games to do that. You know, we're not going to get in that large bit, Alan. What we got to do is we got to prepare our basketball team as best as we can prepare them, hopefully get one of those four slots that's available, and then go into the tournament and throw it all out there. Now, after these last three games, you've had the three most consistent players as far as offensive goes, Ty Petty, Bria Edwards, and then Alex Johnson these last three games, your three leading scores. Is that something you like to have as far as two, two, point, two guards above the three-point line well, for a leading score and then a post down low as well? I, I would, I, I, we're not scoring at our other positions like I would like. I think Abby Sism can do a little bit more than she's done. Uh, I'd like to see Becca and... Um, Gabby and Tiana get a few more points than they've gotten. I'd like to also see Caroline maybe knock down six or eight points a night. And that's one of the things that we'll be shooting for the, the rest of the year, is try hopefully getting them more involved in, in the scoring. Uh, I like what I'm seeing out of Bria and Ty, and I like what I'm seeing out of Alex Johnson. But from a coach's standpoint, I'd like to see a little bit more involvement with those other young players also. Now talk about North Texas here coming up on Thursday at 7 p.m. You guys haven't lost to them since 2006. They have four players averaging double figures. Coming off of the old Dominion game where you guys lost the rebounding margin, is that something you're looking forward to is to bounce back and get back in that right column? Well, we've been doing a pretty good job rebounding the whole year. So we're not going to uh, 
we're not going to jump off the bridge right yet. We're going to, we, you know, we talked about it. We went back out and uh, yesterday, basically we, we touched base on most of our defensive drills and our, our rebounding drills. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep improving there and talking about, you know, rebounding is an attitude. You just go get it. You know, it's up there, you go get it. I mean, you don't get blocked out, you go get it. And that's one of the things that we've been doing and we've just got to go back to that. Maybe we got a little full of ourselves. We won a big game at Charlotte. We thought, heck, you know, Charlotte it was, it was well, maybe was a little better team than they thought in Old Dominion, but look, Old Dominion was picked second in our conference at the beginning of the year. I think I made the statement to you or Tony or someone that that they've got a very good basketball team. And uh, at the end of the year last year, they started this same role. So you can look for them to, to build on what they did the other night here. Not many people come in here and win, they did. So they need to build on that with their program. And so I, I would look for them to win some more big games down the stretch. They got some size, they got some big players. So, you know, overall, this, uh, both teams, us, we've got to go back and the drawing board and them, they got to build on that. And, you know, it's, we still got a lot, a lot of basketball games left in this conference run. Now, after the old Dominion game, obviously that 40-footer wouldn't have been possible if, if Alex Johnson didn't miss the free throw. As, as, as a freshman, how do you get her mindset right that that game is passed and to get her in the right mindset? For Hadn't even talked about it. Hadn't even talked about it. You know, yeah, it's just one of those things. You know, she hadn't even touched base about it. One of the things, that's one of the points that we didn't talk about. Uh, you know, you're right. If we hit that free throw, we could have maybe set up some type of flex zone to made them work the ball a little bit, but uh, you're, they're still going to get a 40-footer off. But, uh, and what you really was, a, was what I was a, not afraid of, but what I didn't want to happen was to get against them and get a foul call where they could go to the line, shoot two, to win the game. And that, I was more concerned about that than I was about them slinging up a 40-footer and it going in. And uh, we might have been just a little bit over aggressive. Now, we did talk about that in our practice, about, hey, we didn't need to be overly aggressive. But I thought Ty might have got a little close to her a time or two there. But uh, as far as talking to Alex about missing the free throw, we didn't even talk about it. Now, the, the last game for you guys on the road will be at Rice Saturday at 2 p.m. You guys have never played there. You guys have only played them twice. Is that difficult to kind of prepare for a team that you have such a small sample size on? Well, you got a new coach, so you really don't, you, uh, really all you can go by is what they've done this year, and we've got all their films, so we'll be pretty prepared on what they want to do and what they've got to do. Uh, our first point in, in on this trip is North Texas. You know, let's go to North Texas, take care of business, and then we'll worry about Rice on Friday. And I'm sure Rice will be doing the same thing. They got UAB on uh, Thursday night, they hadn't even looked at Middle Tennessee, and they'll look at us on Friday just like we'll be looking at them. You guys were on the road Thursday against Charlotte. You guys squeaked out a 73 to 72 win. Let's, let's talk about Giddy Potts. He had 29 points, seven for eight from three. Is there something you notice in warmups? You, you saw him warming up and you're like, it's gonna be one of those games for Giddy. No, because you know, every time he shoots it, it looks like it's going in. He's one of those guys, he's just got a, I've been coaching for a long time. He's just got this compact stroke and, and he shoots it the same from 15 feet as he does from 24 feet. And, uh, but he had a really good week of practice and he was very efficient to get 29 points on only 11 shots. Now let's talk about Dar Darnell Harris. He had 12 points, he had a clutch three to give you guys a one point lead. That's not his first time hitting big shots. He had it in the, the Alaska shootout. He had it against UTSA. I, I gotta ask the question, if, if you need a game winning shot from someone, are you gonna go to Darnell or are you gonna go to Bagetti? Well, you know, that play, he was the second option, and it was the, the first option. We ran a little play we call four reverse, and, and Giddy, they did a good job on getting the second options for Darnell to pop, and obviously he had advantage against their center, uh, Joseph Achibe, and so he did. He didn't hesitate. He was right in front of us when he shot it, and he looked in all the way. 
Now, let's talk about Reggie. He only had seven points. Some people might say he had a quiet game, but he had 13 rebounds with six of those being offensive rebounds. Is he a veteran player that he knows that if he if the, the ball's not falling for him in the hoop, he knows how to affect the game in different ways? Well, he does. You know, he didn't have his best offensive performance on the whole trip, but he, but he gave us a lot of toughness down the stretch. Reggie's not starting games off with the with the juice and the confidence that he needs to, and that's something we've talked a lot about. But I thought in both games, and especially the Charlotte game, he went and got great rebounds, obviously made the free throw down the stretch to win it. Now let's talk about offensive rebounds. You guys were 14-6 to six in your advantage to get 17 against three for second chance opportunities for points-wise. Do you think that was a difference in, in such a close game there against Charlotte? Yeah, it was. You know, it was one of those games we never got in a great offensive flow. It didn't seem like Giddy did. Uh, but it's just those games on the road come down to toughness plays at the end, 50-50 balls, you know, those kind of uh, balls where two guys are going for an offensive rebound, keeping a play alive, and, and Reggie does such a great job of that. Now, let's move to the Old Dominion game. It was, again, a really close game. A lot of people like to look at free possessions, the turnovers, the offensive rebounds. From the first half to the second half, you guys cut your turnovers from six in the first half to just one team turnover in the second half. And then offensive rebounds, you only gave up eight in the first first half and then three in the second half. Do you think limiting those extra possessions really helped you guys in the second half? Yeah, there's, there's no question about that. When our team was struggling a little bit early in the year, it, teams were getting a lot of points off our turnovers. Our team has done a lot better job of that. I mean, only seven in a game like that, a physical game. And so, you know, the offensive rebounds, they're a really good offensive rebounding team. They're going to get some. But that, that was the whole thing in the second half. And then Reggie's ability to keep plays alive, offensive rebounding, one in particular, offensive rebound right to Ed Simpson, who made a critical three. So, uh, but th like again, it was just those things to try to win a tough road game and uh, just doing real simple, fundamental, fundamental things. Now, late, you guys, they had a full court press on you guys, and then Giddy was able to break free and, and get a dunk. Was that a set play, or is that something he just had an instinct that his guy was playing him in between the ball and he could just make a break for it? Yeah, it's a set play that we run against pressure, and, uh, you know, we'll have a regular press offense, and we'll have a, a set play call that the defense is, is allowed it. When they kind of set up, we, we thought he would be open. Ed made a really good read, good play, and uh, it's a play that we haven't run that many times this year. Now, if you look at the free throw line, 10 of 20, that is obviously not what you like. But late in the game, less than a minute to go, you guys were six for eight in the last minute. Is that something that you like to see that even though they struggled throughout the whole game, your team was able to make clutch free throws, especially Jacob Ivory? Yeah, and, and but late in the game, we were trying to, to run, set things, and press offense to get Jacob the ball to be fouled. You know, I mean, the three guys, three of our leading scorers, Perrin, Reggie, and Darnell are struggling at the line. And, and you know, and you. you we said, well, what's wrong with your free throw shooting? Well, some years your best free throw shooters are your best guys that get fouled the most, and you become a really good free throw shooting team. Darnell Harris, I think it's just a mental thing. We came and shot free throws, Darnell and I, yesterday, and didn't change anything about his release or form, but just his setup. I think he'll be much better than that. And those guys have just got to they got to go be confident free throw shooters, you know. And uh, but Jacob Ivory was really good down the stretch. Now, Ed Simpson came off the bench and had 14 points. Is that something that's important to you to have that scoring off the bench? Oh gosh, I mean, we've been we've been waiting for another guard. You know, we've seen Ed do that in the last can shootout against Toledo in the game at all, you know, Auburn game the win in Bridgestone. So just to have a guy that's, you know, that's just confident. We need a second scorer besides Giddy. And uh, when he does that, our team offensively looks so much different. Now, talking about North Texas on Thursday at home, Rice on Saturday. If you look at last year when you guys were on the road, you guys had a 21-point lead at North Texas. They came back and won. Double overtime at Rice. And then you look at UAB this year, giving up that lead. But then these last two games, you guys have been able to win these close ones. How do you make sure that your team is on the right end come Thursday and Saturday? Well, you know, it, you know when, when Giddy plays, we're 11-2. and two, You know, and we've been in, gosh, maybe only the only game that we have kind of wasn't close was Belmont which is usually a really close game. Every game has just been right in the last three or four minutes, even the, the UAB game. So, you know, we just got to keep doing the same things. North Texas talented, three very talented guards. They get their huge inside. Their four-man Combs is averaging 21 and almost 14 rebounds in league play. So you look at them, they passed the eye test. It was the last road trip last year. I mean, double overtime loss. And next night you lose kind of at the buzzer. They call a foul and make a couple free throws. So. It's a tough trip, but you know, I think all that stuff is, is a great reminder to our players and uh, that both of these teams can beat anybody in our league. 
you talk about a great reminder for your team. Do you think it's not going to take much for your team to remember those two games last year and get ready for Thursday and Saturday? Well, I don't know if you did, that's the total focus point, but, it, but you know, obviously you know, a lot of those guys in that room are on the trip. But the whole thing is just what's at stake, having the respect for every opponent in our league, from El Paso to Texas San Antonio. We see what happens in the league. Southern Miss has won a couple games. So it's just Charlotte could have easily won two games and beat both of us, UAB. So it, it's, it's a lot of really good players in our league, and I think our players understand that. You mentioned the league. You, you mentioned it last week on the show and also in your press conference. You, you go on the road and win, that's plus one. You lose at home, it's minus one. How important was those two road victories, and how important are these next two games to stay above two? Well, you know, you can only gain points when you go on the road. Now UAB, Marshall, and us are both plus two. And, uh, but the way league races flip-flop so much is that, you know, all of a sudden a team comes in like North Texas, they get a plus one, we get a minus one, it's a two-point change. And so that, that's how league races really get, get close. And uh, but I was really proud of our team. We played our first three out of five on the road. Not many teams in college basketball, if you look around, have a winning record on the road. We're four and three right now. So that's a lot to be proud of. We've been a really, really good home team, 62 and whatever, nine over the last four and a half years. So hopefully, you know, good to have our students back. Hopefully we'll get those uh, students in, here in Murphy Center on Thursday night and uh, have another good home court advantage.